When the lightning flashes, thunders roll, and storms in fury beat. When they seem so short, go my soul, I hide in your safe retreat. Soon the storms will pass in the sky. Well, good morning, One Church, and everyone tuning in this morning. It's so good to be with you again for another online Sunday service. We trust you've been enjoying the weather this week. It's been absolutely phenomenal because Easter is on its way. And my word are we excited about Easter this year because on Sunday, the 4th of April, we are opening our doors again and we are going to come together and celebrate Easter together. But not only that, not only are we coming together as one church, we have got the honour and privilege this year of celebrating Easter with our amazing friends at Palm Church, led by Mark and Gemma Pawson. And this is going to be a phenomenal day. Because of restricted numbers, we are having three Easter specials, one at nine o'clock, half past 10, and 12 o'clock. And some of you have already booked your place, and two of those services are already full, but we believe that there's still spaces in our nine o'clock service. So click on the link, get online, and book your place. You do not want to miss this time together. You know, these online services have been amazing to bring us together all year, but there is nothing like being in the room and worshiping together. So don't miss out. You know, the cross is a symbol of unity where we are united with Jesus. But this year, we have a unique opportunity to unite with churches all over this area. We are coming together with Greater Glasgow Churches this Easter Sunday at six o'clock. There will be a live broadcast where we will come together as one and share the good news of Jesus. So we want you to spread the word. Tell your friends and family about this broadcast. Share the link on your social media and don't forget to tune in. This is going to be an amazing opportunity to come together as one and God do something incredible. We are so excited about what is going to happen this Easter Sunday between our Easter special with Palm Church and our united service with Greater Glasgow Churches. It is going to be an amazing opportunity. But today we have come together. We are going to have a great word by Roddy as part of our team. And our worship team are going to lead us in an amazing time of worship. So let's just pray before we lean in. Lord, thank you that you are here with us, regardless of where we're tuning in this morning. You are with us. Your presence is with us. We pray that not only will we watch this morning, but we will participate. Lord, let us not just be spectators this morning. Let us lean in and worship you together this morning. I pray that this message that Roddy is about to bring will go far and wide, Lord, that it will reach places that we can't reach. Lord, I pray that this will bring about real change, Lord. Significant change, 
permanent change, transformation in people's lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's enjoy a time of worship, church. I saw Satan fall like lightning I saw darkness run for cover But the miracle that I just can't get over My name is registered in here I believe in signs and wonders I have resurrection power Oh yes I do But the miracle that I just can't get over my name is registered in here yeah my praise be lost to you forever this is my testimony from death to life cause grace rewrote my story i testify by jesus christ the righteous i'm justified this is my testimony this is my testimony oh, 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 oh. come together sons and daughters walk with blood and wash the water sing the praises of the spirit son and father our god what he started yes our God will finish what he started this is my testimony from death to life cause Christ on my story I'll testify my Jesus Christ the righteous I'm justified this is my testimony this is my testimony
time again You prove it Do just what you say Oh, the storm may come And the wind may blow I remain steadfast And let my heart learn When you speak your word It will come to pass Great is your faithfulness to me Great is your faithfulness to me From the rising sun to the setting sun Never 
my hope and firm foundation. You never let me down. I put my faith in Jesus, my anchor to the ground. My hope and firm foundation. Good morning, welcome to another Sunday morning online. I am absolutely delighted that you chose to be with us this morning. We're going to have a great time together. I'm going to get to um, the Bible and we're going to look together at a passage from John 5. But before I do that, can I just um, make you aware of a couple of things that are going to be happening in the near future here in One Church. The first of these is our annual Easter egg decoration competition. Now, for those of you that have been in One Church for some time, you know all about this. It's been a bit of a fixture. But of course, this year we're going to do it, but it's going to be a little bit different just because of the pandemic, because we're still largely online. So this year, we're going to ask you to decorate Easter eggs, um, just eggs from the grocery store, decorated on a biblical theme, and send photographs to us so we can judge them, and the best ones will get prizes. And the only thing to remember is that we we generally kind of um, theme it around the Bible. So it's Bible stories or bi Bible themes. So we've had all sorts in the past. If, if you want to do um, a little egg Jonah being eaten by a little egg fish, then that would be great. Or if you want to do a little egg Daniel not being eaten by a little egg lion, then that would be wonderful too. Anything that your imagination can be um, can conceive and a biblical theme, then we would love to see it. One um, thing just to remember is that we're going to do this by age groups. So primary school kids get their own age group, kids below primary school get their own age group, and then everyone else that's from the high school kids up to the adults, they're competing against each other. So there'll be a prize for the best in each of those categories. So let your imaginations run wild and get in touch with us when you've made them. Now, you can't bring these in person, of course, for us to see them. But what I would love is that if you would make your eggs, um, however elaborate you want to make them and take some photographs and send them to me at my email address which will appear at the bottom of the screen right now. I would love to see them. The deadline will be on Easter Sunday so get them to me before Easter Sunday and then after that we will um, announce the winners and send out some little prizes for the best ones. The second thing that we're doing in one church that's totally new and we're really excited about is the CAP money course. Now some of you may know what that is. Some of you have no idea what that is. CAP is Christians Against Poverty. It's an organization that's been running for many, many years and has a long experience in helping people manage their finances successfully. It's got a lot of plaudits from the secular world as well as the Christian world and has really a long experience in helping people deal with financial problems. Now, Myself, um, Diane, my wife, and Sarah Corr, and other people in the church, we've just recently been on a little course that enables us to teach the CAP Money course, which is a three-week course which helps in some basic financial planning. Financial, financial planning is too 
um, complicated a word financial management it's it's just basic budgeting skills it's not a debt counselling service it's not where we're going to sell you some sort of product it's not a way for us to get donations to the church it's none of those things it genuinely is some common sense tips to help you manage your finances um, better than you do already and it's for anyone and everyone however um, places will be limited so if that's something that interests you then again please contact me on my email which will appear again at the screen here and um, let us know that you're interested the details still have to be ironed out precisely it's likely to be midweek it's probably going to be a Wednesday evening but we haven't quite got a start date yet and we'll let you know a little bit closer to when we've got that all um, fixed down but please if you're at all interested if that's something that interests you then please um let us know um, via email and we'll give you some more detail just about what this is all about and um, why we're doing it perhaps before we actually kick off with this. So I said we're going to read the Bible and we are. We're going to go to John chapter 5 and we're going to start reading at verse 5. If you want to read along, you can do. Sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish festivals. Now there is in Jerusalem near the Sheep Gate a pool which in Aramaic is called Bethesda and which is surrounded by five covered colonnades. Here a great number of disabled people used to lie, the blind, the lame, the paralysed. One who was there had been an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he'd been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, do you want to get well? Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me get into the pool when the water is stirred. While I am trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. Then Jesus said to him, get up, pick up your mat and walk. And at once the man was cured. He picked up his mat and walked. The day in which this took place was a Sabbath. And so the Jewish leader said to the man who had been healed, it is a Sabbath. The law forbids you to carry your mat. But he replied, the man who made me well said, pick up your mat and walk. We'll come back to that passage in a moment. So, before we get back to that passage. Recently, I showed my kids the movie Groundhog Day. Now, there's a kind of moderately complicated story as to why in particular we watch Groundhog Day together. Not least because there's some of you out there going, Groundhog Day? What's that? And of course, the simple answer to that question is that Groundhog Day is a movie starring Bill Murray where the central plot point is that the main character, who's a weatherman called Phil Connors, is reliving the same day again and again and again. Every morning he wakes up in the same bed, in the same place, and the same events happen to him in a small Pennsylvania town. The other odd thing, or the thing that I just recently realised about Growing Dog Day, is that movie was made in 1993, 28 years ago. And that makes me feel really, really old. See, I, I, I'm 47, but sometimes I kind of forget that, and I forget that time passes. I don't know if this happens to you. Um, he, here's a thing I, for you to ponder. Um, in August this year, I will have been married to my wife for 20 years. 20 years. That, that boggles my mind. It's been 20 great years, but 20 years, it's a long time. And it genuinely only seems like yesterday when I was systematically hunted down and tracked by a beautiful young medical student who asked me out. He, here's another thing that I learned not that long ago. Um, again, slightly boggles my mind. The year I met my wife, 1997, the year I met my wife was the same year that one of the leadership team in one church, Jen Youngson, was born. Mind-boggling. Time passes and we, we kind of don't notice it. So, I'm coming round to why we're watching Groundhog Day, trust me. But a couple of years ago, this kind of passage of time not being noticed was brought home to me. I was out with my two kids at the Wallace Mo Monument in Stirling. This is all pre-COVID, of course, a couple of years ago now. Um, I don't know if you've been up there. It's really, really beautiful. What you've got is the actual Wallace Monument itself, which is a really quite substantial stone tower at the top of a wooded hill. And you go there and there's a visitor centre at the bottom and then you go in and you actually work your way up, um, up the wooded hill towards the tower. 
It's beautiful. You should go and see it. Inside the tower, there's this really cool spiral staircase that winds its way all the way up to the top of the tower. And I, I thought it was proper cool. In fact, to me, it resembled some sort of ancient, mysterious tomb. I, I loved the stone steps. And I was bounding up them two at a time, being a, an embarrassing dad, which I'm very, very good at, as my kids will tell you. you know, I just lean into that. It's the, being an embarrassing dad is one of the best um, fun things in the world. But what I'm doing when I'm diving up this staircase is I'm, I'm humming a particular tune. So what I'm doing is I'm going up these stairs and I'm going do 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 which, if you know anything, is the theme tune to Readers of the Lost Ark. And I look back at my kids as I'm bounding up these stairs and I see two blank faces. They're not getting this at all. And I say something like, well, isn't this just a bit like Raiders of the Lost Ark? And again, nothing. Blank faces. So, that very day, we went home and we watched Raiders of the Lost Ark. Now, I'm sure a lot of you know, but maybe some of you don't, Raiders of the Lost Ark is an adventure movie set in the 1930s about the exploits of the daring archaeologist Indiana Jones. And the thing is, the thing I'd forgotten when I was bounding up the stairs think, singing the theme tune, is that it's a movie made in 1981. 25 years before my first kid was born. Of course they didn't know that movie. Why on earth would they? And that, of course, leads us to Groundhog Day. Because on that day in Stirling, I realised, Chings, what great movies have my kids not seen? And so began Dad's Movie Education Project, where I decided that I was going to show the kids all the movies that I loved as a boy and as a young man. So we went through Back to the Future, Star Wars, Dead Poets Society, Truman Show, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, all those sort of things. And eventually that led us to Groundhog Day. And we got to Groundhog Day recently because I kept saying, in the middle of a lockdown, it's a bit like Groundhog Day, isn't it? And I wanted my kids to get that reference. Because it is a bit like Groundhog Day being in lockdown, isn't it? The same day, again and again. I don't know about anyone else, but one of the things I found about the pandemic and lockdown, it has a weird way of making every day feel the same. Kind of variety's been stripped away, hasn't it? Things, there's less things that we do. We don't go on holidays, we don't go out to visit anyone, we don't go out for a meal, we don't go to the cinema. We do the same stuff every day, sort of. It's a little bit monotonous, isn't it? Now, right here I probably need to admit that I'm a little bit weird and there's a little bit of that monotony and regularity that I quite like. There's a simplicity, a lack of drama. I actually quite like that. But I know that for others, this repetition, this the same old thing every day has you climbing the walls. And even I recognise that a bit of variety, a bit of vari variation in your life is very much important to your life. Very few of us flourish doing the same old things day in, day out. And I don't know if you noticed, but in the passage that we just read in the Bible, there was a character who had ended up doing the same old thing day in, day out. That man who was sitting by the pool in Bethesda, he couldn't walk, and he'd been sitting by that pool in Bethesda for 38 years. Just think about that. 38 years of the same thing. Now, I, I don't know if he actually lived by that pool. It's possible he had some friends to kind of cart him back and forward to where he stayed. He certainly later on says he's got no one to help him into the pool, so maybe not. Maybe he genuinely, that's, that was his existence. 38 years by that pool begging. And Jesus asks him, do you want to get well? The man's reply is quite interesting. Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me get into the pool when the water is stirred. When I'm trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. Again, I, I don't really know the details here. Some scholars have speculated that there was a superstition about the pool that when the waters were stirred, and I don't even know what that means, maybe they bubbled a bit, but when the waters were stirred, um, that the first person to get in there would be healed. 
Certainly the, the man thought that kind of getting in there early was important. He wanted to get to the pool early doors, but he had no one to help him. Someone always got there ahead of him. Imagine that. Imagine that life. 38 years of being unwell and infirm and watching someone always getting there ahead of you. 38 years of the same old terrible thing. I mean, we're all cracking up of one year of lockdown and pandemic. Imagine being this guy. Imagine 38 years of the same thing. Day after day after day. How tired and fed up would you be? Now, maybe we can't quite relate to that degree of monotony. But I would bet a lot of money there are lots of things in your life that you're just tired of. Habits, feelings, problems, ways of being that persist and will not go away no matter what. Everyone, I think, has in their life at some point been tired of the same old thing. Everyone has said at least once, not this again. And into this 30 years of pain and disappointment steps Jesus out of nowhere and he brings something new and good and wonderful into this man's life. Something new. Jesus was an unexpected new thing for this man. He healed the man and after 38 years of the same old thing, this man's life becomes radically different. And this act that Jesus did cuts to the heart of who Jesus was and what he was about. He was able and is still able to offer something new and wonderful to those that need it. To the extent that Jesus promises not only to make your life just a wee bit better, not just a bit nicer, not just a bit more respectable, no, Jesus offers the chance to become new creations, different and better in every way. Jesus is the way to escape the monotony that you are trapped in. And that's kind of what I want to talk about today. You know, sometimes when I do this kind of speaking thing, I've got titles for my talks and sometimes I don't. I think this one does have a title. And, and here it is. Today, my talk is entitled Better Than the Same Old Thing. Better than the same old thing. And we're going to look at some ways that God can reinvigorate and redirect our lives when we thought we were trapped doing the same old thing forever. God can be the answer to whatever personal groundhog day you're trapped in. So number one, and I've got a few points here and they all start with the same letter and that always does my heart good when I know I've done that. Number one, number one, restart. For some of us, something new that God brings needs to be something radical. Just tinkering around the edges for us, it's not going to work. Maybe like the man at the pool, you've had years of nothing other than dysfunctionality in your life. And you've tried lots of different ways to sort whatever it was as the problem. And somehow the same old problems and issues keep tripping you up. Perhaps for you, the answer needs to be to totally start again, to restart. A bit like a broken computer. What do you do with a computer that doesn't work? Well, you, you shout at it and you try all sorts of things. But eventually, often the best thing to do is just to switch it off and turn it back on again. Restart. Totally reboot. And that's what God coming to us is like often. Committing your life to him can be just the restart that is required. Forgiveness for all those screw-ups washing clean all that shame and coming out the other end as a different person. In the book of 2 Corinthians, Paul writes this, Therefore, if anyone is in... What, I'll start that again. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. If you're tired of the same old thing, of the same old you, then today you could start again. And if you want to start a life with God for the first time, then we'd love to hear from you. Get in touch and we can talk with you and we can pray with you. Number two, release. Maybe you've already committed to live for God. Maybe you've been following God for a while. But for many of us, perhaps even most of us, even though we're new creatures in Christ, 
Sometimes there's an uncomfortable amount of the old around still. Perhaps there are still some habits that we're ashamed of, stuff that trips us up. Perhaps there's still that character flaw that we've not quite got sorted. Perhaps there's still some situation that we struggle to resolve. Perhaps some of us have even started to think, well, it's always going to be this way. You know, like that man at the pool. Perhaps some of us in our dark moments have started to believe that it will never, can never get better. Now, I cannot say when, and I cannot say how, but with God, there is always the option of something new. For some of us, there does seem to be a bad thing that we do, we just can't shake. The Bible calls that sin. And the Bible acknowledges that struggling with sin can be a real and difficult struggle. This is what it says in the book of Romans. So I find this law at work. Although I want to do good, evil is right there with me. For in my inner being, I delight in God's law. But I see another work at law, um, another law at work in me, waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner to the law of sin at work within me. What a wretched man I am. Who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? Thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ our Lord. You know, we struggle and we mess up and we get caught in the same thing and again and again. Sometimes I think that it's a bit like when water cuts a rut down a stone. I don't know if you've ever seen that or thought about this. I think in particular, this is a good analogy when we get tra trapped in difficult thought patterns. You know, if you run a drip of water down a stone, there'll be minute imperfections in the water. If you put it in the same spot, will probably start to go down the same path every time. And you do that often enough, the water actually will start to cut a rut. It'll form a little path. You know, if you're in a little stream or a river, the water will cut away the preferred path. And therefore, it's ever more likely any time any water comes to that rock that it's going to go down that same path. And some of us are like that. You know, our bad thoughts, our bad impulses always lead us down the same path. It's too hard to go down any other path. That's a rut we've cut. But God can cut a new channel. God can take the hammer and chisel of the Holy Spirit and cut a new channel and forge a new path and make something different. So never lie down and accept that this flaw, whatever it is, will define you as a people, as a person. Because with Christ, there's always the option for a new start. Thanks be to God who delivers me through Christ Jesus our Lord. Number three. Renew. This is related to my last point, but perhaps just to a slightly different audience. I want to talk, just for a wee moment, to the old stagers here. And of course, I totally include myself in the old stagers category. Because just as we discussed, I forget sometimes how old I am. But you and I, the old guys and girls, the veterans, you know, we've been on this road following Jesus for a while. We've got into a groove we kind of know what we're doing a little bit. We know who we are, and we've got some idea who God is. But here's the thing, and here's the thing we need to consider. We need to make sure that no matter how comfortable and sure we are of what we're doing, that what's familiar does not rob us of the chance at the new. We need to make sure that we're not just doing the same old thing because it's the same old thing that we always did because it's all we think we can do or should do, even if it's a good thing. So this is different from getting trapped in the same old thing that's a bad thing, the same old thing that's a sin. But let's not be closed off to something different and new and good, even if what we're doing already is good. Now, I'm not into change for change's sake. Anyone that knows anything about me knows that I place a huge amount of value on determination and stickability. We should not just ditch things willy-nilly. A huge part of being a decent follower of Jesus is just repeatedly showing up when required. But we should never close off the possibility of God birthing something new in our lives. No matter how old we are and no matter how long we've been at this, 
I don't want to be the same as I am now in five years' time. I certainly don't want to be worse than I am now, but I want to have moved on. I want to be deeper and more mature and further into God than I am now. I do want to be doing new things. I want to be doing things that I didn't imagine I would be doing. I want to have developed new skills. I don't want to be trapped in doing the same old thing. Now, I love that I'm already part of a church that's good at taking risks and doing new things. You know, I remember right at the start of the pandemic saying to you all and thinking myself that this was going to be a challenge for us. We we're going to have to do new things. And we've leaned into video services and doing things differently on a Sunday morning and it's brought um, benefits and new skills and new frontiers for us. During lockdown, we've even managed to appoint new kids leaders and new worship leaders. And we've more things in the work. We, al we already mentioned that we've got the Cat Money course coming up. We've got our combined Easter service cu coming up. Something we've never done before. So there's, there's, there's so many new things happening. And that's great. And we should always be open to that. The point is this. The Church of Jesus Christ is thousands of years old, but God is still doing new things through her today. And no matter how old you are, how long you've been around following Jesus, there's always a chance for something new in God. We talked earlier how becoming a Christian was almost like becoming a new creation, being a different sort of being. And the Bible says, do you know what? It's almost like being born again like being born all over again, like becoming a baby, like being totally new. Perhaps for us old stagers, we need to be born again, again, and again, and again, and again. Because there's an infinite number of new and exciting things that God has in store for us, if we just raise our heads to look. Number five, resurrection. I'm coming to a close soon. Let's not believe the lie that nothing good or new can ever happen here. God has a way for all of us to find something new, however monotonous we think our lives to be. You know, we're coming towards Easter, which is perhaps the greatest ever example of something new and extraordinary happening. Do you know, I think, kind of a little bit like Christmas, we get used to the Easter story sometimes, and we maybe forget how shocking and revolutionary it is. I mean, like a lot of the great truths of the Bible, there's so many ways to look at it, so many ways to appreciate it. But here's how I want to approach it today. Since the beginning of time, people have been born. They have lived their lives and they have died. And no one has ever came back from the dead. Okay, the Bible has a few instances of prophets who brought some people back from the dead many thousands of years ago. But those people still died. Death was always reliable. The monotony of the power of death was the one thing that we could all be sure of. We could all be fairly confident that no one was coming back once we died. That the grave always, always had the final word. It was... The same old thing, day after day. Death was the last page. Every time. But then, one day, something changed. One day, God died. One day, a sinless God-man went head to head with the power of death and hell. One day, something new, unexpected and glorious happened. One day, there was a resurrection. One day, death died. One day, the same old things we always believed about the nature of reality were shredded by the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. One day, the power of death was broken utterly and the whole universe shook. Folks, the heart of the Christian message is resurrection. Something new out of something old and tired and dead. Let's never give in to the same old thing. Let us never let death best us when we're still alive. Let us never believe 
that it must always and will always be this way because death and resurrection of Jesus tells us that God will always, always find a way to surprise us, especially when we think we've seen it all. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for your death and resurrection. The ultimate unexpected new thing in the world, Lord. I pray, Lord, that all the dead bits in me will be resurrected. And that everyone who's out there listening today, Lord, will find your resurrection power at work in them. Bringing back to life the bits that they thought had died. And birthing something new. Lord Jesus, I pray for the days and weeks and months ahead that each of us will find new and wonderful things that you brought into our lives. We ask this in your name. Amen. In the crushing, in the pressing, you are making new wine in the soil I now surrender you are breaking new ground so I yield to you into your carefulness when I trust you I don't need to understand Jesus, bring
Jesus, bring new wine 